In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm using my credit cards, the points and miles that I've earned on them to travel even further in 2023 and into 2024. In past videos, I've talked about different card strategies such as the Chase Trifecta, and I've given you strategies on how to earn points quickly on Amex and American Airlines, but I've never actually broken down how I'm using those points to find good deals and make those miles go even further. So let's break that down in this video. For some context about me, I'm 21 years old and I don't make a ton of money every single month, but despite that, I've been able to do flights from Taiwan. I got flights going back to Taiwan in December. I've been able to pay for my flights to and from my house in Ohio. And then I have flights for next spring break going to Bali, as well as two flights to Madrid after I graduate in 2024. This is in addition to a spring break trip to Japan, as well as a vacation, which I fully paid for in flight points uh, to Thailand back in 2022. So I've been able to do all that with a relatively small income and having been a member of Amex since 2021 and then a Chase member since 2022. So my timeline is a lot shorter than a lot of the people you know out here making content. And I've still been able to do a ton with my points and miles. And I've been able to, you know, amass a large amount of points that I've been able to convert and really stretch further than a lot of other people that I've talked to when it comes to this. For example, I watched my friends spend 50,000 Amex points for a flight down to Alabama when there were so many other ways that you could utilize those points and get the value out of it. Now, I'm going to break down my calculation and how I do this. And I'll even direct you guys to uh, the different calculators that I use to show if a flight on points is worth booking or not. And I'll even show you guys the websites and strategies that I've used personally to help me find these flights. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. If you find this valuable, please like and subscribe so we can make more awesome content like this. So the first method we're gonna talk about is the Reddit method. This relies on community and relies on other people being willing to help you, which can be awesome because you're pulling on the knowledge and experience of other people who are also interested in award hacking and travel hacking with points and miles. But it is very limited because again, you can't guarantee that people are going to want to help you. However, I would say that if you're just looking around on the r slash award travel thread, you can definitely find some awesome deals. That's actually how I found my flights to Japan for spring break last year. And it's how I'm able to book my flight to Taiwan upcoming here in December. So I'm just going to break down the anatomy of the posts that I put out on Reddit and kind of give you guys some of the data points that I found to be helpful when you're trying to have other people help you out on these type of posts because what i found is that you know i know a lot about points and miles and people will be like hey i got 300,000 miles what do i do with them and okay, that's not enough information right where are you flying out of when are you trying to travel how long are you trying to travel for is it just you are you going with your partner are you going with your family are you trying to fly economy business class these are all really important questions that you need to give to people who want to help you out because otherwise they, they have no starting point. So let's break down the anatomy of this post. I got a ton of comments on it. Again, results may vary, but I was super happy with this because it actually helped me find the flight. And we'll look at that flight later and just how good of a deal based on the calculator. Let's go. So here's the post I'm looking to get from New York City to Taipei in December of 2023. And I start out by saying, hey, here's the exact date that I'm looking to fly. And here's the exact date I'm looking to return. 22 December, 29 December, or January 2nd. That's kind of the date range that I had based on the amount of time that I'm going to be off school. I gave them exactly how many points I'm working with. I have 170K MR MX points, 60K American Airline miles, and 66K Ultimate Rewards points. This was at the time of making this post. This has since changed. But again, I'm giving them as much information as I possibly could. And I even said, hey, I'm expecting a sign-up bonus in the future, right? So basically what I did is I showed them that, hey, I've already been doing some searching on my own. And this is before I knew some of the other methods we'll talk about later. And here's what I found, right? You want to show that you put a little bit of effort in. You're not just looking to get, you know, a value for free without putting in a little bit of work on your end. And I kind of played like a, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, kind of dumb, kind of new to points, playing the, you know, innocent, oh, I'm just getting started card. I'm not going to lie. Playing dumb can help because people want to help newbies out because again, you know, it's once they can get them hooked, once they can help people out, it's really self-validating. So, I mean, this is a strategy. Again, you can use what you want to do. And then also 
I gave them some flexibility, right? In the initial post, I say New York City to Taipei, but if you know, Taipei is close to a lot of different airports in Asia. You don't have to necessarily fly directly into Taipei. You could fly to somewhere like Hong Kong. You could fly somewhere like uh, Seoul, Okinawa, Singapore even, right? And they're within four to five hours of flight. And it may make more sense if you're flying from East Coast US to Taiwan and then just pay cash for that short haul flight afterward. So I'm giving them some flexibility here uh, with other options for airports. And then lastly, talking about a repositioning flight. So for those who don't know, a repositioning flight is being willing to fly from one region or airport to a potential larger hub airport in order to open up the flexibility when it comes to award travel. Now, luckily, I'm blessed to live in New York City. So you have LaGuardia, Newark, and JFK. So your flexibility is off the chart because they're all in generally the same location. And it's not a whole lot different flying from JFK to LaGuardia to Newark but those can connect you basically anywhere in the world. But if you live in a smaller region, for example, my house is in Cleveland, right? It's gonna be a lot harder to find award availability out of somewhere like Cleveland. So if you live there, you might have to do a repositioning flight to a larger international hub airport, such as Chicago, if you're looking to do that. If you have more questions about repositioning flights, let me know, I can make another follow-up video in the future. But again, let's recap. I give them the exact details of what I'm trying to do the points I'm working with and the airports I'm willing to fly from and willing to fly to giving them as much information as possible so they can help you in giving you the exact information you need to find the flights that you're looking for. So when it comes to this, I actually was able to find that someone replied, Hey, we got United flights for 35 to 40 K each way. There's a really good option when you book through Eva direct. And then somebody on here actually was able to post about flying to Cathay Pacific. So if we look through here, all the comments go to old and then CX so Cathay Pacific. All right. So here's what they said. Just one airplane search isn't extensive enough. So they're giving you some advice. What other Redditors are saying to search across multiple programs. Here's one I found in 10 minutes across Cathay Pacific and SQ. So one thing I'd say in addition to this is be willing to look for different airlines that you may not have ever flown with. I've never heard of Cathay Pacific until this never booked a flight with them but here it is the exact dates i'm looking for and really good deal in j class which is business class so let's look at that actual flight jfk to hong kong and we can even go to more info here uh, i'm going to blur out some of the flight details itself but we look at the carrier surcharges and how much i actually paid out of pocket for this flight we did 85,000 miles and just over 1300 hong kong dollars which is about 170 USD at the time of making that purchase. I don't know what the conversion rate is now, but that's an insanely good deal. Let's plug it into our point value calculator. Now, full disclosure, I did not make this calculator, but I will leave a link if you guys are interested in getting it for yourself. I think it's extremely helpful whenever you're determining whether or not to use cash or points. Anything over two cents per point is an absolute steal. So just for reference, right? A one-way non-stop business class, $7,324 on Cathay Pacific. So it's the exact same airline airframe that you're gonna be experiencing. So you're gonna have the exact same quality, right? 7,324. 7, and if you were to do this in Amex, right? You'd have to pay over 700,000 Amex points, which is insanely hard to amass. But since I was able to find it through Cathay Pacific, and the cool thing about this calculator, right? You can actually select it here, Cathay Pacific right there. I got it from Amex. And then we were able to get it for 85 miles and we paid about a hundred dollars in tax and fees, I think 173 exactly. So we were able to get over eight cents per point for this purchase for this flight. Absolute steal and just a really good deal. Um, now I do have to figure out how to get back to the United States so that could kind of factor into your decision making. A lot of times award travel is gonna be one way, but again, you're getting that much value. This is gonna be my first time ever flying business class. So I'm like super excited. I'm really looking forward to it, but just absolute insane value using Reddit to find the flight. So I've done this a few times, again, to fly to Japan and then here to fly to Taiwan in upcoming December. We have pros, people are really willing to help you if you give them a lot of information, but the cons are that you know, other people may or may not help you. I've made posts like this, you know, before and after and nobody replied. 
So it really just depending on if people are willing to engage with the post and help you out. If they aren't, you're kind of SOL. If they are, you can get some really good value for absolutely free just by, you know, asking and hoping that somebody comes around to help you out. Now, luckily, you know, I'm on this Reddit thread. Maybe I'll see one of your guys' posts and I can help you out. But again, no guarantees uh, that you'll be able to do that. So let's look into a more consistent method that you can use to look for yourself when it comes to booking flights. Seats.Aero, it's by far my favorite tool when it comes to searching award availability on points and miles, namely because it's accurate in both the availability and the price. I found that other websites like point.me or Seats uh, Hacker or Award Hacker, they just have not been accurate in both award price and availability. Maybe they're accurate on availability, but the price is just completely wrong. But this website, I've had a really good experience with both the availability and the price. And the pro membership is only $10 a month. Now, if you're not someone who travels all that often, it may not make sense to have it month to month. But since award availability tends to become available, you know, nine to 12 months in advance, if you're planning a flight for maybe spring break of next year or summer break of next year, it may make sense to pay the $10 dollars and do all your award searching, find the flight, book the flight, and then cancel that membership. But if you don't want to do that, you can comment down below some of the routes that you're looking at, kind of like that Reddit method we talked about before. I'd be more than happy to do some of those searches for you and help you out with that. Now, let's look at the tool and kind of just some of the options that it has and how you can actually leverage it to find award flights. So when you come to the homepage here, you know, this is kind of what the homepage looks like. Now there's the explore option, which is based on the airline. So for me, I really like Air Canada. Let's look at Air Canada. And it's going to show you some of the cheapest flights and most you know, recent flights literally the next day based on the region that you're trying to fly to. So if you're trying to fly to North America, to Europe, it's going to show me flights that are the next day and have been checked as recently as an hour ago. So that's how you know the price and availability is the most up to date from Boston to Munich. And if you want to go ahead and book the flight, all you got to do is press the I and then it shows you the different options. And then down here, book via Air Canada or United, click Air Canada. And then it will load the Air Canada website to the exact flight that you were just searching. Super awesome, super flexible, 35K, right? Accurate in both availability and price. Now, most people aren't going to be booking a flight the very next day. That's kind of insane. So let's look at how you search out in advance. Now, this works off one-way flights. I plug in the date. Uh, for me, I'm looking for flights uh, next year in March or sorry, I'm looking for flights in May. I'm gonna be flying to Madrid on the 26th. I'd like to fly maybe on the 9th to, we're gonna be in Barcelona, Barcelona. And then the cool thing is you can actually search off region. So in the last segment on the Reddit segment, I talked about maybe you're not flying directly to Taipei, but instead you fly to another airport in Asia, like Singapore or Hong Kong, which are close enough that you can actually get yourself there. So big regions such as Asia, right? ASA, you have uh, South American, Southeast Asia, right? Large regions, which may give you a lot more flexibility in searching than just looking at specific airports. And you can do that, right? So for me, I know I'm trying to fly my girlfriend from Barcelona to Asia. So ASA, and then let's look at these flights. So here we go. We got United, Aeroplan, Life Miles, and the lowest I'm seeing is American Airlines. And, you know, literally just checked right super up to date super accurate and the great thing about this website is actually going to give you it gives you guides how the api works different tools and how to get started how to search and really just giving you all the tools that you need but i would say the only disadvantage of this website is not every single airline is tracked and not every single route is tracked so if you have a specific route that you're looking for let's say cleveland to tokyo it might not be in there which is where i come back to the idea of repositioning flights to larger airports chicago to tokyo definitely gonna be in here so ord chicago to tyo because in japan there's uh, hanada and arita and boom there you go right so you might have to do a repositioning flight to find that availability this is really just a short rundown you could do a ton with this you can create alerts for specific routes dates a lot more features obviously are going to be open up to the pro membership versus the free membership. But again, one month, $10, you can do all the searching you want to do and then go ahead and cancel it after you've made that decision and book that flight. Or you could use someone like me and I'll do all the searching for you. 
hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of just how awesome this platform is. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to give it a test run. It's totally free to search two months out. So with that being said, let's end the video off here and just recap again the first method, the Reddit method, and the second method, Seats.Arrow. I know I wanted to talk about some other websites, but really Seats.Arrow is just creme de la creme. It is perfect in both the accuracy and availability. Really the only drawbacks I could think of are the price. It's $10 a month, which, you know, compared to some of the other options like Point.me, it's about on par, but it's just better in terms of actually showing you the exact flights. And the great thing I like is when you find something you wanna book, you click that little I and it will take you directly to that site, directly to that exact flight. And you can go ahead and, you know, see if you have the points, transfer, and then book. Now to supercharge and make this go even further, you just wanna look for transfer bonuses. Transfer bonuses are any way that a credit card is gonna partner up with one of their airlines and give you bonuses when you transfer from, let's say Amex to British Airways. So you might get a 30% bonus, a 50% bonus. So now all of a sudden you're getting a 30 to 50% discount on that price that you see in Seats.Arrow, which is the lowest available price on specific dates, right? So you combine Seats.Arrow to do all the searching and then you maybe wait until a transfer bonus pops up to Air France or British Airways. Now, you can never accurately predict when these transfer bonuses will occur, but if they do, you can definitely combo Seats.Arrow plus the transfer bonus to just go even further. And I remember I did that when I was looking for my two flights to Madrid. I used Seats.Arrow, I saw it, and then I knew there was a transfer bonus to Iberia. So I got two flights, like two tickets to Madrid I only paid 24,000 Amex points. Absolutely insane deal. And again, you can plug it into the calculator. If you're getting anything over two cents per point, you know it's a good deal and you know that you're getting a lot of value out of it. Hopefully that helps you guys answer some of the questions of, okay, I have this many points. I have this date available for vacation. I wanna travel here. How do I do that? Seats.Arrow and Reddit are by far my favorite and most effective ways that I found in order to find these flights. If you have any questions about either method, if you have any ways that you want me to do searching for you, I think it'd be really fun to make a whole video just breaking down different searches for, for viewers and fans, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, so with that being said, I'll leave the links to everything I talked about in the video down below in the description, the Reddit thread, seats.arrow, and even the calculator tool that I'm using to reference to see if it's a good deal to help you guys make the best decision possible when it comes to using your points and miles because it is hard to earn a ton of points and miles. So you wanna make sure you're getting the best possible value out of them. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you in the next video. Peace out.